the Sprint Center in Kansas City. For three years in a row, the Cal Bears have eliminate, been eliminated in this tournament by Penn State. And when the bracket came out this year, they said, we want them. And tonight, they'll get them as they try and derail the dynasty. It's Penn State and Cal for the national championship. I'm Beth Mullins, along with three-time national champion Karch Karai and a remarkable story of these Penn State seniors, Karch. 23 and 0 in the postseason. They've played in every NCAA tournament match in the last four years, and they're trying to take home a title for every year of their career. They've been led by Blair Brown, and they've done it in so many different ways. Overwhelming fashion two years ago with six All-Americans. Last year, down 2-0 and coming back in the finals to win. This year, a setter who's just learning her position, but now they're in a position to be the only class never to lose the final match of the season. Carly Lloyd and company stand in the way. She is the National Player of the Year, and she wants her first title match to be a memorable one. And when she helped recruit fellow teammate Tara Mur Murray there, you see them bumping chest. She told her, I am not going to leave Cal without a title. She is now in the best position to win one against their nemesis in the match, the final match of her collegiate career. Cal looking for its first title in a tournament over the years. It's been dominated by the Pac-10, but they don't have one since 2005 with this Penn State dynasty entrenched over the course of the last three seasons. The top three seeds were all bounced out of the tournament early in a wide open field. It's come down to the Pac-10 champ and the Big Ten champ to decide it. And the Cal Bears in the dark jerseys get the first point. And immediately we see the big gun for Cal, Tara Murray, number four on your screen there. She is going to be matched up against the other player we've already talked about, Blair Brown, the best blocker for Penn State. one nothing Murray so far. Murray, perhaps the most improved player in the country this year, averaging five and a half kills per set in the NCAA tournament. And the response from the three-time All-American Blair Brown. Brown at 6-5 will be the tallest player in the match tonight. And she has spent much of the season correcting for sets that are going a little different positions because the setter, Kristen Carpenter for Penn State, still learning her position. First year she's played. She is right alongside another 6-5 player and Katie Slay, and they get the triple one. And watch how Penn State gets three blockers up. They want to shut Tara Murray down. Absolutely for Cal because she hits over, takes, has taken over 40% of the swings in this NCAA tournament. Murray had 23 kills the other night in the semis. And Murray with the hitting error pushes it wide for Penn State. And Murray in this tournament has been unstoppable. On the year, she's doubled her hitting efficiency from last year at 320. But in this tournament, 354, very poor start. She's hitting negative now. One kill, two errors. The serve from the freshman, Dave McClendon. Shannon Harari has it stuffed right back. Penn State showing why they are one of the top blocking teams in the country. And that's been a major part of this dynasty over the last four years. And the slam in the middle from Harari. Twice, number 16 there for Penn State. Katie Slay showing a little impatience. She, she put it over too easily to the other team. She should put it high on her own side of the net and then her team can play, run a new offensive set. Carly Lloyd back to serve. The 5'11 senior from Bonzo, California. Sixth all-time in Pac-10 history in assists and the kill for Brown. And again, we see the brown Murray matchup. Now Brown hitting right off the left hand of Tara Murray there. They're going to be going at each other. Both teams wanted to get their biggest gun up to the net early, both for Penn State Brown and then Murray for Cal. Set. Larry Johnson through the block, but dug up by Kristen Carpenter. Free ball count. Lloyd. Again to Johnson. Dug up twice in a row by Carpenter. Murray against three blockers, but she slides above. Good choice by Murray. She didn't have a good swing. She had six hands up in front of her, and the block ends up too far outside, leaving her some space there. And that is something that she has done very well this season, is be patient and keep the ball in play more. Carpenter, the quick set. Ari Wilson pushed it wide. California. Even at four early in this first set. It's best three of five. Each set to 25 points have to win by two if we go to a fifth 
deciding set, it would be to 15. Ariel Scott with the kill. We saw in the national semifinal two days ago that both Ariel Scott and Deja McClendon, the two left side, outside hitters for Penn State, on a roll. They hadn't been clicking together all season, both freshmen. The freshman class collectively 24 kills and just two errors in the semis, and Scott attacks the overpass for Penn State. Blair Brown back behind the service line in the semis, three aces. And uh, another critical element of the dynasty has been their ability to serve tough. Hawaii with another kill. We talked to Coach John Dunning from Stanford. He played all four of his teams this season, and he said Penn State is an underrated serving team, the best serving team they face. They also don't get as much credit as they should for how they pass, and watch the pass with two here. A pretty good pass by Dorico there. Ari Wilson between the blockers for the kill. Robin Rostratter, not only wearing the different jersey as the libero, they cannot attack. But also the headgear due to concussion that she suffered last season and became very comfortable playing with it. So now wears it as a precautionary measure. Yeah, yeah, she had a couple of concussions in club, then one early in the Cal season, and a late one off the knee of a teammate prevented Rostrader from participating at all in last season. And they got to play four matches in the NCAA tournament. So very happy. She's very happy to be out on the court now. Got a mouth guard, too. Ready for anything. Deja McClendon with the kill, a hot start for the freshman. In Sprint Center in Kansas City for the national championship match. The three-time defending national champion Penn State Nittany Lions. One of their seniors, Ari Wilson, back to serve. The senior class trying to finish out their careers perfect. 24-0 in the postseason with four titles. And they get the block. The Cal Bears, the fourth year in a row, they are playing Penn State in the tournament. They're looking for their first win over the Nittany Lions and their first national championship. Penn State eliminated them each of the last three years, but never have they played in the final. Cal getting farther than it's ever gone in the tournament before. And the Bears get the kill. They have been waiting all year long for another shot at the Nittany Lions. Both of them breezed rather unexpectedly through the semifinal, so they are well rested and ready to go tonight. Mullins along with Kurt Karai here inside the Sprint Center with over 13,000 plus. Ryan Rostrader digs it up. Murray Shouldn't blocked. Hit. Shouldn't hit it the big sleigh. Got to go over the smaller blocker, number five Carpenter. McClendon tools the block. Point Penn State. That's her second kill of the night. The first title on the line for the Cal Bears. Penn State, they were the first to win three in a row and now really trying to secure their place in history with a fourth straight. Slay slowed it down. Oh. Out to Murray, the All-American down the line. Deja with another kill for Penn State. And a 12-7 lead for the Nittany Lions. And a Penn State team that has not lost the opening set of a match since early October. The NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship is presented by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Inside the Sprint Center, Beth Mullins along with three-time national champion Karch Karai. And Karch, this remarkable story for the Penn State seniors continues. They have lost four All-Americans in the last two years. They are now with the U.S. national team. That's how good they've been. And now this class trying to leave its own legacy. And they have another couple of first-teamers who will probably go on to the USA program also. Amazing all of the talent that's come out of here. But four of them gone, and still they're in this tournament. A lot of people at the start of the season would have been very surprised if you had told them Penn State would be in the finals again. It was hard enough for them to win three. That was an all-time record. Now they're going for four. 
There is the architect Russ Rose in his 32nd season. He has a fourth title from 1999. He is the winningest coach by win percentage in the country and has the best winning percentage of anybody in the national semis and the finals. On the other side for the Cal Bears, and Rich Feller breaking the huddle in his 12th season, the national coach of the year this year. And for the first time, they are champions of the Pac-10 Conference and playing in the final. All these teams with national, national coach of the year, national player of the year, his setter, Carly Lloyd, national freshman of the year for Penn State, Deja McClendon. All this talent has led these two teams to this epic battle where Cal wanted, itched during the NCAA selection show for this matchup. After this Penn State team put them out three times, they would like nothing better to them to win their first title ever against Penn State and stop this dynasty. Story so far, Penn State hitting 500, Cal hitting 100. As Cat Brown gets the kill. Once again, your hitting percentage, you want, uh, you want it to be like a batting average. 300 is awfully good. And Cal, much different than in the semifinals. They have very few errors. They already have four hitting errors just halfway through this first set. Deja McClendon gets stuffed. Tara Murray, the 6 3 junior from El Cerrito, California, sends it back. The top players in the game, including Tara Murray, they're up there touching around 10 feet. That's equivalent to grabbing the rim on the basketball court. The net is uh, around seven feet, four inches high. And women's college volleyball. Kathy Quillico tracks it down. McClendon outside the antenna, point Cal. Penn State got the matchup it wanted. It had Blair Brown hitting one on one against Carly Lloyd, but she was unable to win that matchup. Rally continues. Penn State, uh, uh, sorry, Kell earns the point. Brown serves. And pushed across by Shannon Hawaii, the 6'2 sophomore from Plano, Texas. And if you have to look at position by position, Carly Lloyd blocking here in the foreground has a big advantage. She's been setting for four years an All-American setter on the other side of the net. Five foot six Kristen Carpenter just learning the trade. It's like taking a safety in football around September 1st and saying hey it's not working out with our QB. Would you try it out? <laughs> and she is. She was recruited as a defensive specialist and here she is leading her team. But some of her sets are going to be inconsistent. We saw that one play ago. That much better location that time from McClendon's put away. Allie Longo, a freshman, on to serve. Lloyd looks to Murray. That's perhaps the most lethal combo in the country all year long. And Murray has transformed herself from her first two years. Really sat down, talked to her parents, and just said, I don't feel like I'm getting as much as I can out of myself. I should be playing better. And she turned her things around, started paying much more attention to her nutrition, to her diet, working out more. And she has doubled her hitting percentage, her hitting efficiency from her sophomore year at around 160 to this year at over 321 and in the tournament hitting a cool 350. Whistle at the net. Little point Penn State. We'll come for the back row attack, I believe. Yeah, if you have a back row player and the other side of the net hits it into her, she becomes an illegal blocker. The ace from Dorico. And after a four ball count run, four straight for Penn State. And we may be watching the best server in the country right here. And Alyssa Dorico in pressure situations, and this is her fourth finals appearance. Goes with the off speed serve. Gives Murray a chance to swing away. That in theory should be Penn State's best blocking combination. The two seniors, Wilson and Brown, next to each other, but Murray wins the matchup. 
she's cleaned it up. She had a couple early errors and now back on track for Kel. Backed up by Carly Lloyd. Dug up by Longo. Here comes Blair Brown. Ian again. Off the block wide. Point there. Ian, the 6'3 freshman from Dallas, double digit kills in six of her last eight matches, including 14 in the semis against Southern California. Well, has she come on in this tournament? They playing very much more like an overclassman than her, her freshman years. As the season's gone on, she's gotten stronger and stronger. Cal, now she's a little playing out of her position, too. She's more, a more natural opposite player. But had a huge match against Stanford to help Cal win the Pac-10, the first time they've ever done that. The two outsides were dominant in the semis with 37 kills as Wilson. And that slide behind that she loves, the middle, going to the outside. Coach Feller was even saying, I may regret saying this, but I think it's harder to win the Pac-10 than it is to win the NCAA tournament. Well, he did one. And if that was harder, I guess he should do this tonight, right? He has put together a, an incredible run. Long on that swing, Point Penn State. And since Rich Feller has been in Berkeley, a complete turnaround. They didn't have a winning season in the 90s. Nine straight trips now to the NCAA tournament under Coach Feller. Miscommunication for Cal. Not a good sign for Cal, and that's a sign of a team that's never been in the final. Penn State has a lot of players who've experienced this utter confusion. You do not want to have any decision is better than no decision, and no decision was made on that play. Long way to go for Lloyd. Good cover by Rostrow. Mario Scott stuffed. That little play by Ross Rader saves the point and often goes unnoticed. It's like battling for the defensive rebound and then gets her team the opportunity to win the point later with Johnson on the block. But it starts with helping out your hitter and being ready when they get blocked. Ross Rader, the 5'11 sophomore from Carlsbad, California. Johnson had a little trouble so far, getting hitting out and then hitting. She was licking her chops on that one. A wide open put away, but hit it too sharply down. Again, don't need to make the great play or the perfect play. Just need to make the team that makes more good plays over longer periods of time is going to win this match tonight. Well, speaking of good plays, Dorico able to keep it alive. And then Blair Brown misses it. Point Cal. They are down three. In the race to get to 25, have to win by two here in the opening set of the match. Both teams, not a particularly clean match. It's a close match, but not particularly well played with mistakes like that. McClendon got it down. Deja McClendon with her fourth kill. Make it five now for Deja. Back to third, Arnell Wilson. Freshman out of Louisville. She was in Tampa in the stands watching last year's final. Now out there on the court for Russ Rose as the Nittany Lions try and grab their fourth title in a row. It's a definition fitting of Russ Rose and the Penn State Nittany Lions. The most difficult challenge in all of sports may not be rising to the top, but staying there. With a record three straight titles and now a chance at a fourth, Penn State can prolong the dynasty another year. That 109 match win streak, the NCAA record for women's college athletics that came to an end earlier this year. But uh, just an incredible the one that they have put together and still currently on a 23 match NCAA tournament win streak. And longtime former Minnesota coach Mike Heber has always summed up the dynasty best. I think he said, you know, even though they've lost four more Americans and they're not as good as they were the last couple of years, winning is in their DNA. And they're the only players in the country that know how to win a national championship in a gun. 
it's in their DNA to get to this position. Of course, people realize they didn't have the toughest road here. Yep. They're regional. <laughs> And, it, and, that, and they're drawing, even Coach Rose would say, hey, we know we got a good draw. Some years you get a good one, some years you don't. They've had some, what they felt was bad draws in other years, but it got better as it went along. With the carnage in the other parts of the bracket, the seeds one, two, and three going down. The swing and the kill for Penn State. Yeah, they were kind of hanging out now watching number one Florida lose in the third round and then Nebraska out in the third round and then Stanford out in a region final and all along the way you saw their confidence building. Hey, maybe we could steal one. But we didn't expect on getting. Kind of playing with house money and they're in a good position at 22-18. Nice play by Murray to Push that one over the top of the block. That's a sign of the growth of Tara Murray in terms of, that's her fifth kill, in terms of her variety of shots, different speeds, different locations. A year ago, she probably would have tried to crush that, get blocked or hit out, but patience, she keeps it in play and gets the bonus of the kill. Brown with the kill. Good recognition by Blair Brown. The Libero Rostrader was off the court. Of course, she can't serve for both middles. So Kat Brown had to serve and play defense. If Brown sees that, she's going to tip that way. McClendon to serve. They are two points away from winning the first set. Cal in a position, Karch, conversely, that I think every other team wanted to be in. They wanted Penn State to keep winning so they could be the team to knock the top dog off the perch. Texas wanted to be that team in the semis, came out flat and never recovered. There's a chance for Murray on the outside against Brown. Set point, Penn State. Look for the ball to come back out to the player who's taken the most big swings for Murray. She makes the pass, not a good one. Three persons up. Chance for Penn State. McClendon out of the back. Kept alive by Lloyd. Blair Brown deep in the corner for the kill. Set and the three time defending champs grab the early lead in the national championship match. We are Penn State. Deja McClendon, the freshman, with six kills to lead the way in the opening set for Penn State. The NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship is presented by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. From the Sprint Center in Kansas City, it's best three of five, and the three-time defending champs strike first. They take the opening set 25 to 20. Beth Mullins along with Karch Karai, and now we see Karch the response from Cal. For the first time in this NCAA tournament, they lose a set. I don't think they've got a lot to be worried about, though. Five times this season, they lost the first set and went on to win the match, including both their Stanford wins. They'd never, they hadn't swept Stanford in 31 years in Pac-10 play. So they don't have any reason to lose patience at this point. On the other side of the net for Penn State, we talked to the Illinois coach, Kevin Hamley, and he said, you know, people don't give Coach Rose enough credit for the kinds of things he does to pick your weaknesses apart. I love playing him because I look at the match afterward and say, yep, we got to get better at that. <laughs> yep, we got to get better at that. Oh, we're really bad at that. <laughs> well, they uh, certainly, Cal, would like to improve on that 143 hitting percentage. Yep. The 324 for Penn State. They had six kills from McClendon, three from Wilson. And Tara Murray hit 176. Both teams had about the same number of swings, but Penn State was more terminal, getting 17 kills out of those. And this is the fourth year in a row that these two teams are playing each other. All three of the previous were 3 0 sweeps for Penn State. We knew coming in the hunger, the desire would be there for Cal trying to win their first national championship, but would they be able to handle the moment that Penn State is so familiar with? in winning the last three finals. We see that neither team changed their rotational order. 
Tara Marie still left front like she was in set number one. And Blair Brown, if she puts this away, no, she'll rotate up after the block. Philico diving save in the corner. Twice McClendon blocked. A third time, again by Lloyd, the center. Good blocking moves by Lloyd. Gets her team a free ball. And a free swing for Tara Murray with the kill. That's one of the things you see Lloyd turning toward the sideline and running and swinging her arms to jump. That's going to help her jump higher. She has upgraded her game considerably, more dynamic. She was a little resistant to it at first in springtime, trying some of these new techniques. But as she saw how effective they were, she embraced them. Joe from McClendon against the solo block. This is, this is a big adjustment, too, by the way, for California, playing at a completely different tempo this year. Absolutely. First, the swing blocking we were just talking about, and also they had an All-American outside hitter, Hana Chudua, who played a much slower tempo. Now, Cal is free to set the ball faster to the outside. Like that. See how low that set was. Slay tips it wide. Chura never could have hit a set like Murray just got there. So they want to stress their opponents, Cal does, by running very quickly to either sideline. It allows much less time for middle blockers to go join and form a two-person block. Carpenter to McClendon thunders that one down. Wow, McClendon just hammering. You see Lloyd lining up to block here, but she reaches in a little to her left. The ball goes outside her right arm there. Great vision by Deja McClendon. Eight kills for the freshman. She had 11 of them in the semis in their three-set sweep. Sharon Hawari has been effective in the middle so far tonight for Cal. But that's a pretty high set. That's not a good play by Penn State. And, and their coach is livid, Dennis, over there, because that's a high set in the middle, and there was only one blocker. They should have had three up. We saw the other night. They got three up on a quick set, a low set against Texas. Service error gives Penn State the point. In for Penn State, Ariel Wilson serving Alyssa DeRico. Here comes the big spinning jump serve of Alyssa DeRico. Schmidt with the pass to Lloyd and Hawari, the quick in the middle. Hawari oh, been very effective this season. Now, this is a much lower set, much less time for Penn State to react. And a pretty easy kill created by a good pass and a well located set by Lloyd. That's her fifth kill of the match. Brown. On the overpass, nice play by Wilson just to keep that tough set alive initially. And she has spent, we talked about it, much of the season compensating for sets that aren't in a great location. Last year she led, Ariel Wilson did, the country in efficiency over 500, actually about 540. This year her, she's down about 100 points because of poor connections with a rookie set. Nice up. Get the swing out of the back row. Net violation on the reach from Wilson Point Cal. Good defense by Murray. She puts it close and a good choice by Lloyd. Sometimes she will try to attack that ball. She can be very effective as an off on offense hitting the second ball over the net. But that time she was in the backcourt. She chose to give it to her hitter. to Scott, got the touch, point Penn State. The FCS football championship game comes your way live on ESPN2 at 7 Eastern on Friday, January 7th. It's Delaware and Eastern Washington. For more information, go to NCAA.com. It's the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. Dean off the tip, point Bears. You can see Penn State is trying to go at Gian. She doesn't play much back row yet as a freshman, so when she's exposed, they serve right at her. She didn't give a great pass, but Lloyd making up for it, Ian puts it away. Off the block and out. Point Penn State. Wilson. Broadview, Illinois. 
spent part of her yeah, offseason yeah. training with the U.S. national team. The senior class has kind of been in the shadows a little bit over the last, the first three years of the dynasty, and now trying to make a name for themselves. And no greater legacy than to win the title all four years here in school. Nobody could ever do it even three times until last year when Penn State in that epic battle against Texas come, came back from a 2-0 deficit to win late in the fifth set. McClendon, popped back up by Cal. Back to Deja, and the freshman turning it on in the final. She is swinging with such confidence. Part of it is the speed of that set. There are gaps between blockers, and she can see them. On a lower set, you actually have better peripheral vision, well placed by the setter, Carpenter, at the service line now. Murray responds with the kill. That's her eighth. She swings around behind. Going right at Murray. We're going to see that matchup all night long. Murray winning the previous battle, and then Brown winning that one, getting a one-on-one -on -one situation. Brown can hit at all different spots across the court and can jump off one leg like a layup approach in basketball. That's what she did that time. You have the opportunity to move your rotation, your lineup around a little bit, and both teams said, no, thank you. We're going to go with our stud, even if it means we match up against your stud. And right there, Murray winning that battle. First round goes past Murray, and then Murray thunders one past Blair Brown. But you're right. You can have any one of your six players start at the service line. Neither team changed. We call it spinning the dial. Both teams like the, the matchup at the net from set number one. Johnson able to slow it down. In transition, Katie Slay sends it back. And in that rally, neither setter with a good set. First, Carpenter's drifted way off the net. Then, look at how close that is. Then we call that a trap set in volleyball. Lloyd upset with herself, putting Murray too close to the net. Lloyd back out to Murray. Hammers another one. She's already got 25 of their 48 swings. She took over 40% of them the other night, and it looks like she's ready to go 50, 60, 70, whatever it's going to take. It's a contest <laughs> of who can hit harder, McClendon or Murray. And the ace on the whiff in the back row. Serving at just two passes. Look at all that court. Those two Penn State passers have to cover. There's a lot of space between. That time, no confusion. Scott got it down inside the block for Penn State. Both teams trying to win that battle with speed. The two setters setting very quick and fast sets to the sidelines. It doesn't give that middle blocker time to get all the way out. Dean got it over the smallest blocker on the court for Penn State, Carpenter. And that's something that every setter has to look for. If Ian is out on a 5-6 blocker, the setter has to see that. Lloyd doing a nice job. Look at where the matchups are. Where's the weak blocker? Where's my best hitter? Lloyd is directing them now to a 571 hitting percentage here in the second set. And finding Johnson. This is a shot Johnson didn't have when she first arrived at Cal, but she saw the line. She had the whole street, the whole alley down there, and she took it. Easy point. Wilson Long. Well, you might wonder. Would Rose call a timeout at this point? But he knows there's a technical one, an automatic one coming in one point. So he's got to wait because it'll come. They'll get a free one at 15. 
Cal Block slows it down. Three ball. Wilson dug up by Lloyd. Wilson the third time gets it down. Blair Brown with the kill. Now both coaches waiting a little, knowing there's going to be an automatic timeout. Blair Brown with her eighth kill. Both coaches holding off. They don't want to spend one when they're going to get a free one. Johnson gets the kill. Here comes with immediate timeout. 15 to 12. Cal leading in the second. Penn State won the first. And Tara Murray, the All-American outside for the Bears. 10 kills on 26 swings tonight. Comparison uh, between what the Penn State women's volleyball team has done and what the UConn women are in the midst of doing. Penn State's 109 match winning streak came to an end in September. They are trying for their fourth consecutive title tonight. And a senior class that could go 24 and 0 in its postseason career. Led by Blair Brown, Ari Wilson, and Alyssa Dorico. And that's one thing years and years ago, but when you have 330 plus Division I programs all recruiting and recruiting and recruiting and trying to get the best athletes to be this dominant when it's this competitive and there's that much parity, amazing performance by Penn State. Wilson gets the kill. And talking with Russ Rose this week and hearing interviews, uh, in particular the one that Doris Burke did with Gina Moriello, both coaches very similar mindsets about streaks. We don't care what's already happened. We want to win the next one. And that has very much been Penn State's focus. Even these seniors talk about this year alone, not the last three. Slay, the freshman, she hasn't won one yet. She wants one. And she makes a great read there. We talked about Lloyd, who will sometimes decide to attack as a setter on the second contact. There's an example. She has to avoid the height of Slay at six foot six inches. After the service area, that net about seven feet four inches tall. Uh, a lot of these women at the net are approaching and touching 10 feet, which of course is the same height as grabbing the rim in a basketball court. Absolutely. Actually, many of them, some of the, the highest jumpers are touching 11 feet, a foot over the basket. Her Lloyd with the dunk for the point. Now there she makes a nice adjustment. She knows she might have that same big blocker slay, and so she goes deep. We saw her practicing that in the open practice the day before the semifinals. As Cal was uh, into the net, Point Penn State. Tenth kill for Deja McClendon, who continues a remarkable run here in the semis and the finals. Now Blair Brown back at the net. Let's see the Murray Brown matchup. It's a tie. They'll go away from it this time. Cat Brown. Back outside to Murray. Stuff. Brown and Slay side by side. Penn State likes that matchup. Murray's been swinging with such effectiveness. They haven't slowed her down much except early and now that last block. Katie Slay, a part of five blocks of the match for Penn State. Ooh, that ball ripping way off the net. Good patience by Murray. McClendon had a block by Lloyd. Back out to Deja. And this time cools it for the point. That is not a freshman play right there. What a nice play by McClendon. The patience to just, we call it slopping it over. Just an easy shot off the right hand of the blocker, Carly Lloyd. No media timeout to wait for this time. 
Rich Feller's got to call one to stop the Penn State run. Penn State winning the opening set. Pal even with them here in the second. It's best three of five for the national championship. And it's time now for our Home Depot coaching clinic with Karch Karat. One of the things that Cal has added to their blocking scheme as we freeze it on contact here is end blockers. We see Lloyd and Murray turning and getting ready to run to their respective hitters. Murray turning and running. Both blockers there swinging their arms, helping them get up higher above the net and then reaching farther across. The farther you reach across the net, not it's how high, but how far you break the plane, the better blocker you're going to be. And you saw the, on the swing block how they step across their other foot as opposed to just sliding down along the line of the net. More like an approach when you would go to actually attack. Murray's rejected again. Katie Slay is having herself a night. Sixth block for the freshman. Right into the left hand of Slay. And I just talked about how blockers want to reach over it. I saw four hands that time across the net. Well executed by Penn State. Close. Coach, do you worry about Murray getting 50% of the swings or you just ride the All-American? She's taken 31 swings out of 63. It's so readable that Penn State can set up a better block, and that's why Murray's having trouble right now. And it's a 5-0 run for Penn State. The deficit into the two-point advantage. Cal trying to win its first championship. This is the fourth year in a row they are facing Penn State in the tournament. They've been swept the three previous occasions, and Penn State has gone on to win the last three national titles. Well, Sunday night, ESPN2 has a couple of ranked women's basketball teams for you with number two Stanford and number six Tennessee. It's at 7 Eastern on ESPN2. It's all part of Holiday Hoops presented by K Jewelers. Sunday night at 7 Eastern. How about that lineup of uh, women's hoops tomorrow on the Family Network? Stanford, Tennessee, UConn, Ohio State, all in the top 10. The Penn State freshmen were spectacular, Karch, in the semis, and they are awfully good again tonight. Look at the numbers from McClendon, Slay, and Scott. And the coaching staff said, we have not had all three of our freshmen going together all year long. What timing by them in the semis and now so far in the NCAA finals. It has been a learning process for both the players and the coaches. You know, Russ Rose likes to say over the course of this three-year run, most times I'd look across the net and I wouldn't want to trade for anybody. They wouldn't have anybody that could start for us. This year, I see a lot of people over there that could start for us. And he says, you know, freshmen do some strange things. You can't always depend <laughs> on what they're going to do. And they have done some. In fact, in the early rounds, we saw McClendon having to get pulled out of the regional semifinals. But, and then Scott in the regional finals. But all three on track so far here. They are responding to the challenge of trying to get the seniors that fourth championship in a row and get their first as Murray uses the block for the kill. Cal back with him one. But Cal again going to Murray. It's becoming a very predictable offense. Penn State can set up a block pretty well on that. They know where it's going over half the time. McClendon. An absolute cracker. In the semi, she had 11 kills, zero errors out of 15 attempts, hit 737. Again tonight, hitting very effectively, almost 500. A dozen kills to lead everyone in the match. Ferrari had it put back. Rostrader again able to keep it alive and get her team the point. Cal is trying to make some adjustments. You saw Hawari, she has a knee brace on. She blew out her ACL last year. It's still hard for her to jump off of one leg. She has not been doing it all season, but we see something different from Cal in an effort to spread the court out a little. She still prefers, as she's coming back from that surgery, to jump off two feet rather than one. She slowed it down. Murray will get another swing. Blair Brown is stuck. Murray ties it up for Cal. So Penn State likes Brown blocking on Murray. 
And Cal likes Murray blocking on Brown. Murray winning the matchup that time. Ariel Scott, another point for a freshman for Penn State. Penn State's best server. Scott, and the block gets it down for Cal. Penn State had a chance to go for it and let it drop. Strong block by Corey Johnson there with a right hand, and Penn State making an error. If you have an easy play and you don't know whether it's in or out, you have to play that ball. Do never, never, ever depend on the linesman to make the right call. We know some other teams in this tournament have learned that lesson. Coach, you're sounding very John McEnroe in that <laughs> assessment. Sometimes it's hard to see and make it right. There's talk about something like in tennis, bringing a computerized replay system into volleyball. Got to get to 25, win by two. Seventh kill for Wilson, the seniors making plenty of noise tonight for Penn State. Murray out of the back row. Got it. Nice adjustment by Murray. She normally likes to hit that way back toward her left. And McClendon was leading that way in the back court. So instead, Murray hit it straight down the middle. She saw some open space. A nice pass by Dorico. Wow. That was a good serve. Deceptively short, but Dorico makes that play happen. You don't get a lot, of, the Libros often don't get credit for that, but you have to have a good pass right on the money. And then Wilson gets the one on one hitting situation. Johnson got it. She's the one who's more effective on jumping off one leg. That time again using the outside hand and the blocker. I think Cal needs to do more of that to spread the block out. Johnson hits toward one sideline, Murray toward the other. McClendon blocked. And Cal has a set point. Wow, that block by Lloyd. You see how high she got off the ground with her swing blocking move. Above and across the net. Timeout, Penn State. This is the 5'11 setter who is also the active blocks leader in Pac 10 play. Watch, she turns, gets her head over the net. She was not doing that in previous years, but she's made big adjustments to her game to take advantage of the athleticism that she has. Look at that, head over that net that's seven feet, four inches. And an eighth. I'll add that as well. <laughs> it's a set point for Cal. Penn State leading the match one to nothing. Today's winning team will receive 40 points towards their school's quest for the Capital One Cup. The runner-up will get 24 points. It's 13 men's and women's sports that are represented in the new award, and the final standings are calculated by the NCAA Division I Championships and final official coaches polls. For more information, log on to ESPN.com slash Capital One Cup. Final here in Kansas City. Cal looking for its first title. The Penn State dynasty trying to add a fourth in a row. Murray with 13 kills. McClendon with 12 for Penn State. Second set. I expect the ball to come back out to McClendon. The connection between the setter and Wilson hasn't been great. Ross Tratter digs it up. Gian, no! Penn State was there with Carpenter, the setter, returning the favor. Gian made the right.
right choice. She hit at the right blocker, 5'6 Carpenter, but she hit it too low, barely across or barely above the net instead of higher over the hands. Now, have to win by two. Better choice, she hit it high that time. Uh-oh, over the net. Lloyd, the National Player of the Year, comes up with a big play. That was huge, that pass was far too close, going over, but Lloyd saving it. Penn State will use its final timeout, so both sides out of them. And the second set point coming up for Cal. And in this scramble play, the ball going over the net. McClendon trying her hardest to stop it, but Lloyd out jumping her. She's worked out so hard to be in the best shape, the best condition, the most explosive of her career. She knows she only has this last season to try to live up to wanting that title before she leaves Cal. She promised her teammates she wasn't going to go without one, and she has made the play to get them both set points. And it's interesting because both coaches we saw at about the middle of this set holding off their their timeouts. They got to use them late exactly when they would want them to calm down. In Penn State's case, a setter who's just learning the position the last three months. And of course, for Cal, they've never been in this position. They've needed some calming down also. Beth Mullins and Kurtz Karai inside the Sprint Center. The Nittany Lions. Three straight titles, all in different fashion. One was a route. One they were up 2-0 and almost blew it. And last year they were down 0-2 and came back to win it in five. They took the opening set 25-20. This is a tough rotation for Penn State because Middle hitter Katie, Katie Slay's up there. She's not particularly effective offensively. Expect the ball to go to McClendon in the front row or Brown in the back. Brown. Not an assertive swing at all. Another big rejection by the freshman. At that time we saw Murray make a mistake. She hit it at the 6-6 six, six Slay instead of the 5-6. Look at these two blockers here. Slay is towering over Carpenter. Wrong place to hit. Seven blocks for her. Uh-oh. Well, Lloyd made another huge play for Cal on the block. Come on, Carly Lloyd, go to your stick. Misconnection there in the middle. Expected to go back out to Murray, but she's going to have Brown and Slay against her two very tall blockers. Now to Murray. Block got a piece of it. Penn State for the set. Murray again. Ooh. Brown pushed it deep. State fights off two set points, and they have the two-nothing lead. And the Bears let one get away. They were on the verge. They had great swings, great sets to finally take a set off Penn State, their nemesis for the last four years. But two huge blocks, and then Brown just saving this. Murray in the net. Point, and again, that deep, sh soft tip shot is going down. Cal can, has to read that more quickly. So a 2-0 lead, and you see the disappointment from Rich Feller, who now joins us over there on the headset. And uh, Rich, how do you get your guys back together quickly in the locker room to come out for the third? I think we just have to play our game. Um, you can see that uh, Penn State is human. We're human. You know, we made some good plays, but we weren't consistent enough, and maybe we made some bad choices right down the stretch there. Uh, could have had some good plays happen, and we didn't make it. We didn't make it happen. So, 
serving and passing and uh, just executing some of the things we do well. I think we're right in this match. Coach, you stuck with the same matchup and you got the two swings you wanted. Any other changes you're thinking about? No, just uh, we got to make sure that we keep the serve away from the libero and uh, serve a little bit tougher. We, we've got him on a couple of short serves and got a few better blocks. But really, again, I, I don't think we've even played close to our, uh, our game right now. We just got to come out here a little more relaxed and do what we do best. All right, thank you very much, Rich. Okay. Rich Feller, the National Coach of the Year with the Cal Bears. And watching one slip away, Penn State. Two set points, they fight off, they're up two zip. Inside the Sprint Center in a 2-0 lead for Penn State. Head coach Russ Rose now joining us. And coach, you guys staved off a couple of set points out of timeouts. What were you stressing with your team coming out of those two breaks at the end of the set? Well, we just needed to get a good block out there. It was We knew where the ball was going, but Murray's such a terrific attacker. We were fortunate to get good touches. But, you know, it's uh, the match is far from over. And... Uh, Cal's a great opponent, and you know we're going to try and get the ball to Ari and Blair, and see if the seniors can get us some uh, get us some spacing here. Coach, it looked like you got the matchup you wanted the first two games. Blair Brown blocking a lot against Tara Murray. Do you expect them possibly to change it? Well, I'm not really sure if they'll change it, but uh, you know we we know where the ball's going. She's almost at 50% of their swings, but we need to be able to see if we can slow her down some more. All right, thank you very thank much, you. Rose. Four titles, including three in a row. And Deja McClendon, the freshman, leading the way with 12 kills, hitting 321. And she has come up big. We saw in the semifinals, 11 kills in three sets. Now 12 in two sets, including swinging very assertively against a strong Cal blocker. We saw Lloyd Getter just one time late. Murray with 13 kills, but the problem for Cal right now is with her taking half of their swings, but only hitting 158. That's just not going to get it done. Yep, Murray, 38 swings out of 79 total. Lloyd has been the leader of this team all year long from the springtime on. She's the one who's just helped them with their motto, and which is, you know, keep the ball in, give ourselves a chance to win the play later in the rally. Been so physical this year, improved her technique and everything, but come up short so far. Penn State trailed 0-2 in last year's final and came back to win it, taking three straight against Texas. Now they are up to zip. Can Cal do what has only been done three times in the 30-year history of this tournament and rally from 0-2 to win a championship? And Cal does not change up anything. Murray left front. So is Brown. What they do change is they didn't set Murray. They set somewhere else. And that's a good change. They need to mix it up. You see her on your screen there, number 11 in blue. Cat Brown has to get more attempts, as does their other middle, Shannon Hawari. Take a little of the pressure off of Tara Murray. Kristen Carpenter with Blair Brown. And there's one of the seniors that Russ Rose talked about. Can they bring it home for the fourth time? Starter, she too spent some time with the U.S. national team in the offseason. And Rose, to uh, Rose told us last weekend at the regional, when she scores, we're good. When she doesn't, we lose. And she's scoring well so far. McClendon rubs one out of the back row. We haven't seen that much. No, Carpenter, the setter, is feeling confident in her hitter, McClendon, to deliver it to her in the back row. That's a wrinkle that Cal hasn't seen much. So we've seen wrinkles, new tech or new tactics from both teams so far in set three. Murray somehow got it through the triple block. There must have been a gap in the block. It just slid through. So that's exactly what Penn State wants. You can see here three people up, but a little space between Brown on the right and Slay in the middle. Carpenter back to Brown and off the block wide for Penn State. Blair Brown now with 12 kills. Brown that time showing the patience that Murray has learned this season. It's not lined up. Just tap it over. See what happens. Yes, sir. Point down. 
Service error from Dorico may have hurt her hand on that one. She's mad at herself. She gave herself a poor toss that went way into the court, so she barely got it with her fingertips, and that's why she's grabbing it. She just couldn't even reach the ball. Penn State using just two passers. Wilson dug up by Lloyd. Murray misfires out of the back. And in prior rounds, we have seen Murray swinging much more aggressively out of the back row. But she saw a good block in front of her, got a little intimidated. Nice pass. McClendon gets it. Got a good read to come way over toward the sideline to make that defensive play. Lloyd to Hawaii in the middle, got it down. Come down. Two nice adjustments in that play. Number one, McClendon coming way over toward one corner to make the defensive play. And then Hawari, knowing where she was playing, hitting toward the other corner. Ariel Scott rejected. Tries to tip it over, chance for Cal. Another stuff and a point Cal. Well, it was a good cover by Dorico, but Blair Brown wasn't ready for the second one, kind of standing straight up. You see her way in the right corner there and then getting low to make the play. That's too late. Another tough serve for Cal. We'll get them the chance here, and they do pick up a point. That's certainly something that Coach Feller was talking about. We need to serve tougher. We need to get Penn State out of its offense. Two aces in a row. That's the tougher serving that Feller wanted. And you can feel the momentum shifting a little. We felt that last year when Penn State fell down 2-0 and started to come back against Texas. All Cal really needs to do is get this third set to get their confidence and they're ready to roll. Wilson wide open, sliding behind for the point. That's a play Wilson loves to run. It's just whether her set right next to her and behind her. They're hard to see because she's only 5'6". And Wilson just a bit taller at 6'3". Dean gets the kill. Point Cal, the FCS football championship game will be live on ESPN2 on Friday, January 7th. For more information on the FCS football championship, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. And that's the cost of trying to turn the volume up, turn the pressure up on your server that you're going to miss more. Now they're also just able to apply a little pressure to see how Penn State will respond. The Nittany Lions have won 18 of 19. Their one loss was a blown 2-0 lead to Minnesota late in the regular season. They have yet to be tested in the postseason. Brown out of the back into the net. In the middle of that rally, we saw the center for Penn State Carpenter taking a swing. One of the things Coach Rose said about her, he said, she's our hardest hitter. Just like Alicia Glass, the All-American setter that they, that they lost to graduation and has gone on to star as a setter for the U.S. national team. Used to do, she used to be the hardest hitter. Talk about some big shoes to fill this year for Carpenter. There's a chance for Cal. And their setter is going to get a swing, Carly Lloyd. Who can also bring the thunder. And another stuff, Cat Brown alongside Lloyd. This time, Cat Brown doing a nice job. There was some space there between her and the end blocker, but she got her hands across the net. That's the most important thing as a blocker. Cal, even in blocks with Penn State, ahead here in the third. Well, as Penn State tries for its fourth straight title, UConn looks to continue its record run. They'll take on the Ohio State Buckeyes, gunning for their 88th win in a row. Tune into ESPNU at 2 Eastern to see if they can continue their streak. Penn State, the Nittany Lions had a 109 match winning streak come to a close earlier this year. They have won the last three national titles. In 08 and 09, they did it undefeated. 
And they'll try to cap it off with a fourth straight and a 2-0 lead here tonight as Blair Brown gets the lead out of the timeout. And actually, at the start of the season, Penn State was ranked number one. Coach Rose didn't feel that was really fair with all the talent they lost to graduation. Here it is. Apparently, the coaches were right all along in that early ranking. Lloyd goes back out to Murray. Slay got another block. Murray had to try and go over the top of it. The swing block was there waiting for Brown. Good choice by Brown just to keep it alive. Schmidt bumps it up. Slay sends it back again. Well, this is going to exhaust Murray here. She keeps having to swing five times a rally. Carpenter back to Brown. And off the block wide. Point Penn State. Well, we have the same matchup. I was wondering if Cal would change it. They did not. So you have Brown hitting against Murray. Murray hitting against Brown multiple times that rally. Brown still out. That attack wide for Penn State. Blair Brown now with 14 kills to lead the way for the Nittany Lions. She's hitting 357 in the final match of her career. Will it be a fourth consecutive trophy winning match? McClendon got the block. Doesn't get the kill as it's stuffed again by Lloyd. Lloyd still giving her team life. You were talking about Blair Brown, how good she's been. She was struggling the first half of the season. Coach Rose was even saying, hey, you know, when you have your stars, like, hey, we need you. We need you to lead these young players. They don't know how to do it. They, they want to follow somebody. After they had a rough weekend in Indiana, the middle of the season, she's turned it on, they've turned it on. Second half of the year for Brown. Averaging more than one kill per set than she did in the first half of the season, and her hitting percentage up over 50% from the first half of the year. So early on, coach was like, hey, where you been? <laughs> I need you. Sometimes, yeah. Karch, do you get the sense that after being a follower for three years against some pretty dynamic, behind some pretty dynamic personalities, it takes a team a while to get used to new leadership? Absolutely. And that was something that Blair Brown and Ari Wilson and Dorico had to learn. They had been more of the followers until this year because so many great players like Megan Hodge and Alicia Glass were with the program. So it took them much of the season to learn, well, how do we lead this group? This group is waiting to be led. That's a tough serve. Nice pass by Ross Rowe. Longo chases it down. Good get by Garico. Back to Blair Brown. Schmidt down to pop it up. Brown against the solo block. And the rare show of emotion from the senior. Exactly what I was thinking. Not seeing her celebrate that much, but she can taste it now. Only down one with this two sets to none lead. That fist pump has been four years in the making for Blair Brown. And the ace from Longo. Both the last two serves. You see the whole Penn State bench going crazy. Both the last two serves were rockets. Ross Rutter controlled the first one. Now they have to, have to bring in a third passer, Megan Schmidt. Good pass. Oh. Lloyd really tried to dump on two. And Ariel Scott makes her pay. And Penn State's got all the momentum. And Cal has to burn a timeout. Feller not happy with that shot by Lloyd. Too soft. It's just going to put it over on the second contact. Throw it down hard. Four straight points for the Nittany Lions, seeking a fourth straight national title. They are in the driver's seat and on cruise control right now. I think the, both the sweaters are going to have to go to the Hall of Fame if yeah. they do that. Oh, there's no way he's ditching that after four of them. <laughs> he's going to keep that as long as he's coaching. Triple block again facing Murray. Blair Brown, the senior, with her sixth kill of this set for Penn State. She's got almost half their scoring. for its first.
first title. Penn State a fourth in a row. And Brown and Wilson and Dorico, the seniors, could win one every year they've been in a Penn State uniform. The coaches have said Penn State is an underrated serving team. They are turning it up big time in this third set. Another ace on what, in theory, should be the best passer for Cal, Ross Stratton. Six straight points. Murray stuffed. two plays Brown when she didn't have it she hit deceptive shots first the tip and then this roll shot it looks like it's going to come hard it's like an off speed pitch in baseball you mix those in gives the defense fits wow 7 0 run make it eight and another ace and timeout Golden Bears Hugo was in the doghouse with coach a little earlier this week for getting his bag on the bus but he's got to be happy with her now Longo with three aces off the bench for Penn State. Another freshman making big contributions here in Kansas City. They've won four titles, the last three in a row. And just an incredible run for the Nittany Lions. The last two championships undefeated. This one, they hit some bumps in the road early, but Blair Brown has cranked it up in the second half of the season, and in particular overnight. She came up huge in that second set. They easily could have lost that. A couple of big blocks by Penn State, and then she gets the kill, that soft shot, the tip deep into the corner, and Penn State very happy to go into the locker room with a 2-0 lead. Seven kills in this set alone. And we believe the first fist pump in her career. She's been showing an awful lot of emotion tonight. Well, as Penn State tries to continue its streak, so do the UConn women's basketball team. They're in the Maggie Dixon Classic tomorrow afternoon on ESPNU at 2 Eastern against Ohio State as they try and match UCLA men's basketball program with 88 consecutive wins. It's tomorrow on ESPNU. Of course, Penn State says record schmecker. We, <laughs> we've got 109. Connecticut only at 88 <laughs> or 87 right now. The other streaks of note in NCAA history. You got to be impressed both by Penn State's and by UConn's in this competitive age yeah. of so many D1 programs, respectively in volleyball and in basketball for women. And in fields of 64 teams in the NCAA tournament. It is a longer road to get to the championship. Penn State starting to feel it now. Longo. Point Cal as Murray gets the kill. We saw Cal try something different. Murray coming into the court looking to attack, trying to get away and avoid the block of Blair Brown. It worked that time, so we'll watch to see if Cal does that some more. Brown continuing to tear it up here in the third. Well, Carpenter's still learning the setting crowd, but she's no dummy. If somebody's got seven kills this set, let's make it eight right now. <laughs> Wilson got that one, the other senior. They're trying to reward her with the set. Instead, Cal in transition. Getting the point. And Cal needing to get other hitters going. In that case, Corey Johnson bringing it cross court. We saw her earlier go down the line. That's still open for her. Murray, 51 swings for Cal. And the service error, Point Penn State. When you have to carry the load like that, passing a lot, hitting a lot, 
It can affect other parts of your game, and it was it was clear it did on that serve. Another tough serve. Set from Carpenter, so Cal will get a chance. Not gonna make it. Point Cal. Good hit by Gian. Cal needs to do a better job of avoiding the tallest blockers at Penn State, hitting higher, flatter shots. Another big swing from a senior. That's a high flat shot. Wow, can she elevate there and go right over the block? The streak ended in September. Back to back losses in October. And you could hear the murmurs, the rumblings. The dynasty is done. Penn State's in big trouble. And all they've done since is win 18 of 19. And they are now four points away from the improbable. Chip point. Finish it with a kill. McClendon dug up. Carpenter back outside to the freshman. Murray got it. Coach Rose still has one timeout. He's debating. And he'll use it as Cal fends off three championship points. The Penn State Nittany Lions 
They won their championship in 07, sort of with the buildup. They didn't have any seniors of note on that team. They came back the next year in 08, the so-called best team in history with six All-Americans. They win it again last year, undefeated, with the best senior class in the history of the sport. The winningest, Alicia Glass and Megan Hodge. And this year, they weren't supposed to be here. And yet they have figured out a way with this senior class and the freshmen that have kept getting better, Karch, and they are now at championship point. And some of the coaches I talked to here, Coach Rose has gotten coach of the year for some of those winning teams. They're only half joking. They're saying, what is he, if he wins with this group, what is he, coach of the decade? <laughs> They are looking for their fourth in a row. They win the opening set, and then Cal had a chance to tie it up in the uh, second set. Penn State fights off two set points to go up to zip. Two huge blocks by Penn State. Cal had everything it wanted. A big swing by Tara Murray on the outside, another by Guillen, and they just couldn't seal the deal. That deflated Cal to the point where they then came out flat out of the media break in the third. The Penn State seniors said, yeah, winning three was great, but this is about a legacy of our own. This is a new year, a new team, and they are the leaders this time around. And they've got another championship point. Paid off again for a coach and his wife. 